millet value chain replication and upscaling for mainstreaming millets so i think it would be prudent to give a, a small few seconds uh, introduction about uh, all the panelists uh, i would like uh, uh, professor gulshan kanna to start off first so that we all know what is your area of expertise and uh, your background so that the panelists and as well as the audience can ask questions please thank, sir thank go you ahead. thank you I am Dr. G. L. Kanna. I am Pro Vice Chancellor in Manav Rachana International Institute of Research and Study. I am working actually on this sports, uh, millet in sports. How we can use this millet in the plate of sports person as well as specifically because there are sports person, they are having deficiency in various minerals. Particularly, if you see they have lack of iron which is very much indicative of our hemoglobin from hemoglobin itself. Our sports person have got very low hemoglobin. If you see the calcium part again, they, there is a deficiency in that. When we went to the peptide side for protein side, they were having less muscular development and millet is actually the source of this, which can really make up something if we really put it in the plate from the right beginning on the talented children possibly. So we are working on those, some project in collaboration with Indian Institute of Millet and Research. Thank you. Dr. Jagmeet, yeah. please. Uh, I am Professor Dr. Jagmeet Madan. Uh, I'm a nutritionist by profession. I'm also the National President of Indian Dietetic Association and a principal professor of Sarvithal Das Thakursi College of Home Science, which is a premier autonomous college of SNDT Women's University, Mumbai. So uh, I am also privileged to be the member of the National Task Force uh, on Millets. And uh, I think maybe I represent the nutrition vertical uh, towards the uh, promotion of millets and also generating the evidence-based science uh, related to millets, uh, you know, uh, where which is pretty much limited, and uh, making it relevant uh, to people at large. So, yeah, thank you. That's really nice to know. Uh, now, the director, manage, please yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you, madam. Uh, good evening to one and all present here. I am uh, Dr. K. C. Gumgormat. I am working as director, monitoring and evaluation at uh, National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management. In short, it is called as manage. So I have around 25 years of experience in agriculture marketing, supply chain and value chain. Uh, besides that, I am heading uh, FPU Academy. We have opened a FPU Academy in Manage and we take care of uh, capacity building programs uh, of FPOs. So this is in nutshell about me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Srivastava. Hello. Uh, this is Dr. Alok Kumar Srivastava, uh, representing Association of food scientist and technologist India and uh, I, I am former chief scientist at Central Food Technological Research Institute, Mysore and I am having certain experience in the field of cereals processing, food safety. Thank you. I am Divya Devarajan. Uh, I am an IAS officer of the 2010 batch. I am heading the women and children development department in Telangana very passionate about millets and passionate about this topic. So let's hope that uh, we find some uh, good enlightening uh, ideas and thoughts in this session. Ms. Bajpai. Good evening to all. I am Chahad Bajpai, IAS officer of uh, 2019 batch. I am working as additional collector in uh, Kumrambi Masifabad district of Telangana. I'll be sharing my field experiences uh, regarding implementation of a decentralized millet waste value addition model which we are doing in our district. Thank you. Thank you, Chahar. Uh, I would like to uh, call upon Lakshmi Agaru now. Yeah, good evening everyone and uh, respected uh, chairperson and uh, myself, uh, uh, Dr. Lakshmiya. I am heading the division of public health nutrition. So, I am also uh, National Secretary of Nutrition Society of India and we have, in this society we have more than uh, 6,000 life members are there. All are uh, nutrition background and uh, everywhere, every month uh, we are able to conduct uh, uh, this uh, awareness programs on uh, nutri cereals and apart from other uh, nutrition subjects. I myself uh, involved in uh, research activities and uh, we, uh, we are uh, 
uh, we have also developed uh, some of the uh, products, uh, the, the different recipes and products, millet based. And even our institute, National Institute of Nutrition, we are also uh, conducting some bioavailability. Now, several questions raised the bioavailability of uh, iron in the uh, different uh, millets and uh, as well as uh, we are also studying some impact, uh, the randomized control trial impact of uh, uh, different millets on in different aspects, especially on diabetes and uh, even uh, even uh, undernourished children also, stunting and underweight, how how much it will be reduced and how it is. Uh, uh, now several speakers also said that it can be, uh, the millet can be compulsory, make it into the uh, government uh, food supplementation programs. So how this uh, food supplementation will impact on uh, under nutrition, improving the nutrition status. Thank you. Uh, finally, I would like to request Chancellor Sinha to introduce, please. Uh, thanks a lot, Madam Chairperson. Uh, I'm Pranay Sinha, working with World Food Program, and I work on the intersection of millets mainstreaming and South-South cooperation initiatives. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Srivastav uh, has some uh, urgent commitment. So, I would uh, request uh, uh, Dr. Alok Srivastav to start off the discussion uh, regarding this topic because uh, food technology is a very important hurdle for replication and upscaling and mainstreaming. Uh, we all think, we are all passionate about millets, but when it comes to the food technology that is involved, if there is no right technology available in the grassroots level, then upscaling and mainstreaming will be a very big issue. So, can I understand how AFSTI is working on it and you specifically, what are the suggestions you have for uh, the technology uh, being taken to grassroots level? Uh, for example, I'll just ask a question from my side. You know, for the last two, three years, uh, we have been trying very hard from Food and Civil Supplies Ministry to provide millets for our ICDS program. So, we have uh, more than 26 lakh beneficiaries and 35,700 Anganwadi centers. Unfortunately, the main hurdle that we face is that we keep getting paper tigers, that we got allotment of itna jowar, itna bajra. But how do we uh, use technology which is low cost so that we can take this uh, millets to our main programs uh, like midday meal and ICDS and PDS? Uh, over to you, Dr. Srivastava. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, a warm welcome for this session. Uh, as uh, Chairperson very rightly mentioned about the challenges and bottlenecks of the millet processing. Uh, I, we are hearing since morning the benefits, advantages of millets in terms of the health, nutrition, constituents. We all agree with that. Uh, let us talk something about the future and bottlenecks, what we need to address it collectively. First thing, uh, as uh, she mentioned very rightly, we need to focus on the quality parameters. When we talk quality parameters, not only the present, but during its entire self-life. When we talk about millets, we all know that self-life is generally short two months, three months after that product due to its inherent uh, size, its fat content and also exposures. It uh, has its own uh, hydrolytic, oxidative, enzymatic rancidity and then product gets unacceptable, unpalatable. So that is the major challenge. We need to address it. There are technologies, there are processes which uh, IIMR and other institutions like CFTRI has worked on that. But obviously, we need to strike a balance between the cost and the quality. Uh, that is one point because technologies like probably uh, steaming, then the vacuum packing. Obviously, when you talk about because we went around the stalls here, there are certain products who are selling it in a vacuum pack, which will have long self life. No constraint but cost would be at higher side. So,
so but again steaming and all many companies are using it now and then they are extending the self life so that also can be used there uh, second thing which i would like to focus here about the taste profile uh, if we are looking for the year of millet 2023 our focus has to be to make the millet products amenable suitable compatible to the palate of the youth unless until we connect the palate to the youth it is not going to have significant dent on the population youth is the large population coming up be it a millennial or be it youngsters uh, because somehow we have noticed that uh, they are not inclined they are not closer to the millet mainly due to the taste probably uh, we need to have some kind of uh, mix formulation spice formulations which can probably the mask what we say that the unpleasant taste order and uh, other things so that also need to be worked on that another important aspect which i am very happy that uh, dr dayakar rao and team at iimr is working in a project mode which is a clinical trial of all those millets we have been hearing it that it is anti diabetic it is anti cholesteramic it is uh, so and so forth but we need a documentary evidence scientific data proven with the clinical trial uh, so that the documents can be put forward and then we have the validated facts on them then only we can make the convincing uh, evidences to the population regulators policy makers so that uh, i'm sure that coming uh, one or two years we should have documents on that we have documents which are based on the ayurveda and other things but probably uh, much more on the scientific basis uh, we need to have that next thing uh, i would also like to put one aspect which requires regulatory support uh, recent time we have seen the moisture content uh, maximum value alcoholic acidity maximum values uh, probably they were not meeting the in field requirements probably the alcoholic acidity value maximum was 0.18 which we follow for other grains like rice wheat and other things now that has been increased to 0.25 but still we find challenge that if your product has to stay for 4 months 6 months the alcoholic acidity value will be rising to 0.25 so probably it need to further go ahead and same way the moisture content 12% 11% that also we need to probably address because we are looking when we are talking about the public distribution system it need to have some kind of self life at least 4 month 6 month kind of self life we need to have but present situation no it is not possible uh, unless until we do the cost intensive processing which again is a hurdle another uh, point which is important especially for the entrepreneurs is because here we see about the 60 to 70 80 stalls are there i have gone through each one of them talk to them but there lacks to be clarity i have seen products which is labeled as millet upma millet biscuit millet poha yeah uh, but then uh, there when i ask them how much is the millet uh, how much is the wheat they say that wheat is 60% 50% and millet is 30% 40% obviously when you if you are calling it a millet poha millet upma it has to be predominant first major ingredient it has to be highest in the content of the ingredient so this all need to be probably uh, included into our policy making and also the awareness uh, processing like malting and all it will always help germination malting fermentation will also help to address the assimilation of the bio uh, uh, availability of the nutrient so these also need to be addressed and need to be taken into consideration with this i will uh, sum up my comments and uh, i compliment the iimr team and uh, stanley saab and uh, 
uh, all the team members for having such a wonderful show here wherein we have all possible stakeholders and I strongly recommend the earlier uh, session probably next year it has to go towards the north so that probably the because we see when we talk about the millet mostly it is concentrated in the southern part Maharashtra and all it is our duty to take it to the other parts where it is not popular so thank you chairperson thank you uh, team IIMR for calling me here and thanks for sharing my thoughts ma'am thank you dr Srivastava. it was all valid points that you made uh, definitely for vacuum sealing and the steaming, uh, clinical trials, regulatory approach, entrepreneurs being uh, also uh, enlightened about the content of millet in their products and uh, maintain ethical standards, uh, processing like malting and germination. Uh, it was really a very enlightening uh, uh, short uh, power packed speech that you have given. Uh, I would just like to comment on one thing, which you, I kept it at the last, the palate. Uh, this is very important because we see the rich and the super rich uh, going towards the uh, millet based foods and they have a niche market for it. Whereas the poor people who used to eat this uh, in large numbers, their palate has changed because of the policies of the government. We have been pumping rice and wheat to the population so much that a child nowadays in a poor household doesn't want to have uh, you know uh, jowar ka roti or uh, bajra ka kichdi because the palate has changed and that's because of our government policies as well. So uh, I would like to just give a small example when I was collector Vikarabar, we tried a small pilot project called Chinnar Lakki Chirudanyal. Chinnaru means small uh, uh, children. Chirudanyalo means is called millets and the millets here in Telugu it means smaller grains for whatever reason it's called Chirudanyalo. So the little uh, grains for the little ones was the name of the project and when we introduced this uh, uh, millet meal in the Anganwadi centers, hot cooked millet meal, it really helped the children at a smaller age to pick up this uh, taste and there was a lot of demand for it later. So I think we take a cue from there, our PDS, our midday meal, our ICDS, if we introduce millets there, then children can get used to this palate and there can be a large scale acceptance of millet products and millet cultivation to go on. I think you have a plane to crash, Dr. Srivastava. Yeah, so thank you for joining us and uh, we will let you go here. Thank uh, you. And thank you for your input. Thank you, Chairperson. Just one point to add what she was mentioning. When we say millets, uh, we used to call it is a poor man's food earlier. But when we go to the supermarkets now, the same millets are costing 200, 300 rupees or so, which is a luxury food for any one of us. So probably this is a challenge we need to address the uh, value chain, distribution chain. But still the farmers are not getting this price there. True. Probably it is the middleman the price is going there. So that also we need to address, we need to have affordable quality millets. Uh, we'll hear from uh, the young IAS officer, uh, Chahat Bajpai, uh, how she has uh, been able to implement the uh, introduction of millets in uh, Asifabad district uh, and what has been her experience in taking millets to the grassroots level. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Good evening to all. I am additional collector in Kumram Bhim Asifabad district, I, as I mentioned earlier. Kumram Bhim Asifabad district, it's a very young district formed only in 2016 from erstwhile Adilabad district. It is also one of the aspirational district under the Niti Ayog program. It is uh, uh, like it has a major majority of tribal population uh, consisting of mainly seven uh, tribal groups. Uh, mainly the uh, the Gon population constitute the majority of them. It also has two PVTG groups, uh, Kolams and Thoti groups, uh, particularly vulnerable tribal groups. So they are also uh, present in the districts. So uh, in this uh, setup, in this uh, district, 
we started a program called a decentralized uh, millet uh, pro decentralized millet uh, processing through icds like in cooperation with the women and child development department and uh, the results of the with the results of this uh, uh, this uh, program the results were so heartening that uh, this district was in news recently because of winning a prime minister award for excellence our uh, district collector was awarded by um, uh, prime minister honorable prime minister for the heartening uh, results it was made possible through the funding we got from niti ayog and through the continuous guidance and support that we received from women and child development department so i'll uh, briefly tell you about the uh, the things that we have done in this under this program the program was named as a uh, mission sampurna portion where the sampurna stands for strike against malnutrition by people's upliftment through revival of nutrition in asifabad so as it means revival of nutrition so that means we had to revive something that has been forgotten but that had been part of the culture and tradition of the people but we had to revive it so it was an attempt to start this uh, millet value chain at a decentralized level at the village level the main component the main uh, component we thought of it uh, about is triple c triple c that means cultivation cooking and consumption at the village level the cultivation will be done at the village level the uh, cooking will be done there and the consumption will also happen at the village level so this we uh, this model this will also make the model very ecologically sustainable uh, because there would not be any logistic cost we won't be transporting the millets from here to there and uh, this uh, um, this area also uh, traditionally it has been uh, the part it has been one of the major millet belt uh, the major uh, jowar ragi sam samailu foxtail millets they, these have been grown in that region traditionally also but uh, from from last few years the from the last few decades i would say the people had shifted towards uh, cash crops like um, cotton so uh, we just had to remind them we just have to uh, revive this thing uh, which was already a part of their tradition so the first main component that was there is cultivation promotion of uh, millets cultivation in the district we took the target of 6040 acres uh, for uh, our district and um, um, so the major challenge that we got in this process was the to get good quality seeds because um, uh, now um, uh, for for especially for the minor millets the kodo millet for the little little uh, for the uh, foxtail millets getting good quality seeds was also a challenge for us so in this uh, we tied up with iimr and they supplied us almost 12000 kgs of uh, um uh, like with the with the uh, with the approximate uh, approximation of 2 kgs per acre and they supplied us uh, certified seeds and through our we have we we had taken up some community resource person and through the agriculture extension officers which are already there in the uh, in the agriculture department through them we had taken up this free of cost distribution to the of the seeds to the people the uh, we had purchased the seeds from iimr and we distributed it free of cost but with a promise that they will be returning the double the amount of the seed what we are giving to us it is also a traditional uh, practice in the tribals ki when somebody gives you 1 kg of seed you return them 2 kg of seed after the harvest so so that this can be made sustainable and in the next season we don't need to buy seeds again second second thing that was there is processing regarding processing so for the major millets like um, jowar uh, we mostly have that grinding um, mills in the villages uh, where they can uh, um, make uh, jonna pindi which which they call the jowar for flour and uh, which is used for making uh, mostly the jowar roti but for the minor millets like uh, in the morning session also uh, one of the dignitary mentioned ki one of the major reasons why why the millets are declining is the drudgery that is involved in post harvest processing so for the minor millets uh, uh, which have this layer of coating over them what we uh, did is we provided them a uh, dehuller machines ki at the rate of one dehuller machine in one village that will be operated by one of the shg women 
so um, uh, they will be processing their own also and anybody else in the uh, uh, village also can come to them and uh, get their uh, uh, minor millets processed they are very low cost machines and uh, they, they can they are like mixer grinders they are low cost and they can be easily sourced so uh, this is what uh, we evolved ki for dehaler machines at the village level for uh, jowar uh, there is uh, one more thing possible is that we can make uh, jowar um, um, uh, jonna annam that is called like uh, dalia sort of and uh, rava also idli rava also so for that we have set up a uh, a unit it, it its unit cost is almost 20 22 20 25 lakhs so we have set it up at the mandal level so there the people can come and use it uh, for pro processing next major thing that was there is the to change the food preference of the people it is actually one of the most difficult task but for our our part like i told ki it is only the revival that we have to do we don't have to uh, uh, like completely we we only have to remind them what what they always used to do so um, uh, this was uh, this this thing we started by promoting first of all the main component that was there is organizing the training session from the for the anganwadi teachers this program was mainly in the collaboration with the icds so one thing that we did is the training all the anganwadi teachers we have around 980 anganwadi centers so all the anganwadi teachers were trained in millet recipes simple millet recipes they whatever things they normally eat what whatever things they normally make with rice those recipes only like puli hora or curd rice so those things also can be made with the millets a uh, bhaji they will make so bad uh, that uh, pakoda so millet uh, this ragi bhaji they can make laddu ragi laddu they can make so ragi java uh, ragi idli or jowar jo jonna do, dosa samailu payasam payasam is like a kheer sort of thing so they will be preparing for every festival so samailu payasam so uh, these are some of the training sessions we organized for our anganwadi teachers further how, from anganwadi teachers to the uh, to the women sg women what we did is keep in every village we organize this millet food festivals uh, they have been actually very successful um, uh, in uh, for for every millet food festivals the anganwadi teachers uh, and all the rural uh, the shg women small children they will echo, uh, they will come night together at a community center and there they will be cooking these recipes so when the anganwadi teachers they will be cooking they will be demonstrating they will showing it to the other ladies also ki it is so easy to make these uh, these things so and then after that all of them together would be eating these recipes so they will be uh, like liking it like some of the things like rag ragi laddu and all puli hora samailu paisam they have actually come out to be very good so they will be demonstrating it and after that all of them will be consuming it also together so uh, then after that um, uh, apart from this also we have uh, a program uh, giri portion in the pvtg habitations that is also one of the thing to uh, um, like change the food preference like like madam was telling ki, uh, ki from the childhood level it is also an effort to introduce this um, uh, millets for the for the children for the small children at the icds level so that they develop that palate they develop the taste uh, by by the time they grow old um uh, the regarding this program are uh, the the results which have come out they have been very very heartening and uh, we have seen significant reduction in um, imr we have seen significant reduction in mmr if i quote the data in 2021 our imr was 108 it has come down to 71 in uh, 2021 22 uh, so 2021 and 22 21 22 it has come down to 71 underweight and stunting has also shown a significant reduction almost a 60% reduction has been uh, seen in underweight and uh, stunting in in it has a significant impact on agriculture also ki like um, uh, even despite this uh, floods and all this this year we encountered floods uh, just after the sowing season so uh, some crop was damaged but even despite of that also we have almost 4 4000 acres of standing millet crop uh, uh, as a result of this program so uh, this program has been very impactful and uh, one uh, so now going ahead uh, we have certain plans like uh, going ahead uh, we are pushing for um, uh, borrowing from other districts and other states we are pushing for millet food cards 
कि स्पेशली फॉर नियर द ऑफिस एंड स्पेशली नियर द एरियाज लाइक पार्कस एंड ऑल वेयर वी कैन प्रमोट सम ऑफ आर मिलेट रेसिपीज ऑलरेडी वी हैव आर एस एच जी वुमेन्स हु आर वेल ट्रेन इन द रेसिपीज सेकेंडली मिलेट इज आर वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट ऑल्सो सो वी वॉन्ट टू कम अप विथ अ ब्रांड फॉर आर डिस्ट्रिक्ट सो and new we are we have a partnership with nutri hub also uh, for incubating a brand from for our district and we also look forward for any kind of partnership partnerships from the mncs and any type of collaborations uh, who can support us in building this brand and uh, the in the development in the growth story of our district so uh, with the continued support from uh, government of india and government of telangana we, uh, we 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 hope to ca carry on this pro uh, project in the future as well thank you thank you chahar it was really uh, very inspiring no wonder your district got the prime minister's award uh, you can see the kind of uh, thought process that has gone into the uh, implementation of this program what i found very heartening is the concept of giving 1 kg of seed and returning 2 kgs of seed so this is how conservation happens so your motto of cultivation to cooking to conservation is a very very apt uh, process to encourage millets in every district if every district collector all across the country around 700 districts are there if everyone takes this challenge truly 2023 will be an year of millets so as a manufacturer here had uh, told about uh, introduction of millets in icds in pds in uh, midday meal i think small short steps towards it has already begun and if we all uh, combine our expertise and uh, the intentions together i am sure we will be able to uh, go towards a, a nutrition and uh, nutrition secure uh, india and the world so thank you chahat for this enlightening talk now we will go to akshay patra foundation uh, mr anand tarora is he here with us no okay he is not there okay now we'll go to uh, dr jagmeet i think uh, she has very interesting points about the diet aspect and the taste and the palate aspect because if we have to replicate upscale and mainstream millets it's very important that it has to be tasty as well as it has to be um, nutrition conscious because uh, with a large population and with the recent nfhs survey indicating that in our diet there is very less uh, nutrition value in it so how are we going to uh, solve that problem for that we are going to ask dr jagmeet madan to please uh, give us some solutions yeah thank you ma'am uh, for this question and i thank dr dayaka rao i don't see him here but uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity and making me a part of this uh, convention uh, ma'am you 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 touched the uh, right spot uh, i think as a nutritionist uh, we always say that india is a carb country indians cannot live without carbohydrates and in millets we get a solution of quality carbohydrate with nutrient density so the message is that indians have to restrict their total carbohydrate content and yet get nutrient density so here is a solution where through millets you are getting your quality carbohydrates and nutrient density so i think it's a blessing uh, uh, i mean as from i'm looking at it from a nutritionist lens so it's the biggest blessing which we indians have as a heritage and uh, i am so overwhelmed to hear this success story uh, from madam and actually ma'am the solution of making millets reach each and every uh, individual of this country is to go local and uh, you know what the model which was presented was you know you identify the local millet you cultivate it you look at what are the preparations which are predominant in that community you know in you know engage with the community and you know give them the practical solutions so that and and make it exciting uh, you know so that they feel good about it and they feel feel really nice to uh, do something like this so i think uh, this model of uh, 
uh, what you said, cultivation, cooking and consumption. I think every nutritionist of this country would dream as a and as a national president of Indian Dietetic Association, we have 25 chapters, ma'am, across India. So it's like we can touch every state of this country. And if a nutritionist of every state can do this bit along with the administrator. So uh, today is a time that, you know, we have to converge. And uh, I think uh, uh, I congratulate FSSI, uh, you know, who took the first step to get the convergence through the formation of NetProfan, which is a network of professionals for food and nutrition. And they got seven associations together, you know, on one platform. And it also involves the administrators. So which means all of us talk the same language, all of us connect with each other and look at the bigger goal to find a solution. And basically, people need solutions. So I think uh, that's one thing which I would really emphasize. Now, you spoke about uh, palatability. Yes, Indians love their food, and Indians want the food to be palatable. And to my mind, again, as a nutritionist, I vouch for the statement that a nutritious food can be palatable. It's just that we have to you know, use our innovation. And sometimes networking and you know the team approach with chefs so i think the most optimal combination would be that a nutritionist works with a chef and she gives her technical inputs and takes the expertise of a chef you know to get that that the touch of palatability I, i'm sure we are going to provide many many solutions and here again i would emphasize i head an institution and i I'm, I know I, I have so many youngsters, uh, students, graduates, postgraduates, uh, you know, who are filled with innovative ideas. So I think we need to partner with them, take their innovation, go to our local communities, find these solutions. And uh, again, one more thing which is very important is that it's just not enough doing this. We need to do some impact studies. And I think I'm so glad to hear that you had some markers uh, in mind at the pre-level and you, you looked at those markers at the post-level. So I think all of us can contribute in this space in our own state, in our own place where we are and adopt communities, uh, you know, use our resources which we have, leverage it. And sometimes I also feel that, you know, we, we tend to work in our compartments. You know, when, when we are working at a national level, and I'm so heartened today that nutrition is a national mandate. And because it's a national mandate, you know, we have all the stakeholders sitting on this dais and talking about it. So why not we make a blueprint of a template, you know, which all of us can standardize, give our inputs, wherein all of us, all stakeholders can come together and we can replicate it in the various states from where we come and also maximize on whatever resources we have. So I think these are some of the things which we really need to uh, ponder. And uh, uh, just last one or two points which I want to make is, ma'am, that definitely uh, I, I said that millet is an ingredient. So again, as a nutritionist, I have to talk the language of a food. And a food is always a combination of ingredients. So, so as a nutritionist, again, we need to look at which are the good ingredients which can be combined with millets so that I get the goodness of all the ingredients and not overemphasize on one ingredient. So, uh, so you know, and sometimes I feel when you, when you start developing a product, you have limitations that you cannot do without a certain ingredient. But if you look at the matrix of if you can increase the positivity of a product and decrease the negativity, that means supposing if I need to use fat in my product and if I just enhance the quality of fat, I make sure that I'm, have a, I'm having a monounsaturated fat or I'm using invisible fat, you know, or I work on the flour which I'm using or I add certain uh, seeds to it. You know, in totality, I'm looking at what I'm mixing as ingredients, 
but my millets can be the base of that preparation. I think it will work wonders and we will not come out with many pros. I mean, I'm, I'm saying we should have processed products because that's the solution. We are looking at convenience. So we don't have that kind of time, but I think all the people who are putting their heads into, you know, innovating and coming out with millet-based product should ponder that, you know, what is the blend uh, which we are looking at, what are the ingredients which we are looking at, and also generate the evidence-based science. And I'm quite heartened that through this mission, uh, we are doing, uh, Dr. Lakshmi has said, we are doing certain randomized control trial. We are looking at the glycemic index of certain foods. Uh, you know, we are also looking at the bioavailability. These have been the concerns of millet. So we, are, we look forward to that data, which will make our conviction more strong. And uh, I, the last point is uh, that, you know, I think we all must have the mantra of Eat Right Campus. So uh, when you say Eat Right Campus, Campus is not only my institution, my university. Campus can be any place uh, where you work, where you have set of people who are there working and, you know, you take that opportunity. I, I really like the idea of the gentleman who said that, you know, we, we must uh, see, it's not only the government, sir. As a head of the institution, if I take a decision that in my institution, Whatever gathering happens, I'll make sure that I work with my students and I come out with innovative preparations based on millets and I serve it. So, so it's, it's just a commitment. And somewhere I feel if the commitment is at the top level, it trickles down and gradually you see the behavior change happening. It may not be successful at the first instance, but somewhere the beginning has to happen from the people who are sitting at the helms of the org organizations and not only just the government bodies. So I think these are some of my thoughts uh, which I thought I'll put in. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jagmeet Madan. It was uh, truly inspiring to hear you. Eat right is the key word I pick up from her, uh, uh, you know, passionate uh, pitch. Uh, eat right is not only starting with uh, uh, the campus, but the family and the individual, which if we all do it at our level, I'm sure the uh, conglomerates which push in uh, maida and different types of uh, uh, unhealthy products, we can pressurize them to make products that are healthy and nutritious and that change should happen from within is what she ended with and I truly appreciate it. Now we'll go to uh, NIN, Dr. Lakshmaya. So I want to share an anecdote before we go to uh, Lakshmaya Garu. So, uh, from the same region where uh, now Chahat works, in central India, there are a lot of mahua trees, you know. Uh, the only thing which the Indians know about mahua is that it's an intoxicated, in intoxicating drink and everyone would love to taste that intoxicating drink. But what people don't know that the mahua flowers are so rich in vitamin C and they are used by tribals in their day-to-day -day food. So they mix it with millets and consume the mahua flowers uh, in their traditional food, uh, which is slowly eroding because many of these uh, tribals are now eating the PDS ration rice and they are forgetting their uh, old traditions. So we tried to do something there and uh, there we started the Mahua Laddu making unit. You will be very surprised. It's such a super hit in that area right now. And certain people are ordering it from USA. And uh, NIN has done an impact study of our Mahua Laddu. And they found that, shocking to me as well, we all say vitamin C is highest in Amla, the gooseberry. We say that everyone has to eat one. And Mahua almost has, the flowers have almost equivalent vitamin C to that of Amla. So uh, when mixed with uh, iron, that is with jaggery and some millets and some peanuts and made into a ladu, and we gave it to pregnant and lactating mothers, the impact study has proven that their hemoglobin levels shot up within weeks. So can you imagine the wealth 
and the diversity of food items that's already available but we go and auction tons and tons of mahua to just make liquor but we are not capitalizing on the product that is available in lakhs and tons which can be utilized to make products which can save the nutritional security of entire central india where it is available abundant so nin has done one such impact study and they partner with us very seriously in uh, ensuring uh, the nutritional safety and security of the children of uh, not only the nation but also in telangana in particular so dr lakshmaya is a passionate uh, scientist who works on these uh, topics so i hope you can throw some light on how we can upscale and mainstream millets and what are your thoughts on it thank you madam thank you madam so uh, actually so i good evening everyone and uh, the more than hundreds of uh, delegates still they are there now that uh, shows the interest of uh, uh, millets uh, conference because uh, because everybody support is very important to uh, get the millets into mainstream so i um, thank you very much and uh, uh, before i forget i i would like to thank uh, uh, this uh, nutri hub uh, conducting the wonderful uh, convention here especially dr dayakar rao and uh, here uh, uh, madam uh, said that two three points because uh, here two things are because i don't want to repeat but the importance of millets uh, from since morning uh, you have been hearing so it is uh, it is very very important millets nutri cere nutri cereals are very important for food security nutrition security and uh, another important is dietary diversity because dietary diversity is very very important we are uh, now even madam also said that the, the nfhs five report the dietary diversity is very very poor only even uh, even even southern states and some other states also very poor and it is uh, it is uh, almost uh, lower uh, layer so the millets uh, if you improve, if you motivate the millet consumption automatically the dietary diversity also improves and another fourth point is uh, even uh, uh, agriculture sustainability and biodiversity also improves uh, the millet consumption and uh, the uh, if you the demand is increased the production is increased even agriculture diversity also improved and here another uh, important two things are there one is uh, i said in the beginning also the uh, everybody question that the iron bioavailability because a uh, lot of phytates are there even insoluble fiber is there in the millets that may interrupt the absorption of the uh, iron and we are uh, we, we are we have also doing one research study on that iron bioavailability in the millets by different process methods so which process methods could uh, re improve that iron bioavailability and apart from how to uh, remove the phytates and the content the anti nutrients so this is also one uh, uh, project is going on probably next uh, annual uh, meeting we could come with this uh, results another two studies also we are conducting one is impact study and especially young children so now lot of uh, uh, now next year also everybody knows that it is a millet year and before millet year comes we have to uh, uh, include in the uh, government funded supplementary programs like madam said uh, icds even mdm so we are all planning to include uh, we have already uh, recommended to the government and the government is agreed and uh, now even uh, madam just now said that even allotment also coming now so the the uh, from fci so now we, how to utilize is the big question now so we have to slowly include all the, uh, the government funded programs and uh, just now we we are also thinking that some of the uh, acceptability trial and so then uh, development of uh, uh, this uh, uh, millet based uh, even the thr that uh, take home ration foods we have to we are now planning to work out and once uh, the acceptability self life period and its impact so then uh, we can uh, uh, come with a very uh, full fledged program into government programs another point also because several uh, uh, previous speakers and even audience also raised that uh, so we cannot recommend that entire uh, you eat entire uh, life uh, millets only because uh, we have done some uh, uh, linear programming studies so what level we have to consume the millets and to get the beneficial effect 
under linear program uh, 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 the result shows that at least one third of the your uh, uh, food you should include the millet maybe out of uh, one uh, out of one month 30 days at least 10 days uh, we should eat the millet based food then we will get the 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 whatever the targeted benefits of millets we can get so this is also uh, recently we have analyzed uh, uh, using the data wherever the millet consumption uh, population and uh, we have nnmb national nutrition monitoring bureau we used to collect the dietary consumption levels in entire india so now we are also coming with a, a, a big survey and that uh, even dr madan may be knowing dab study the diet and biomarker study in entire india all 36 states with biomarkers including impact of uh, even millet consumption so the, the, this when we, we are going to initiate uh, very shortly so that also gives some beneficial how it is a beneficial effects and other things so another point uh, i would uh, like to say here is the creation dissemination of this information is very important uh, like uh, even dr madan also said that because uh, we have i am the nsi national secretary and i will be there up to 2024 so another uh, two three years so we are uh, we have 37 chapters state chapters and we have 6,000 uh, uh, life members and 80 percent of these life members are nutritionists and uh, those who are working in the uh, uh, in the nutrition area so we have already given the guidelines and uh, we given the instructions to all the chapters and at least every year two three seminars or uh, even workshops should be on nutri serials so we are also from the central headquarter we are also funding some 40 to 50,000 those who are conducting these uh, seminars and uh, dissemination workshops on nutrition. So these uh, two, three things are uh, I want to mention. So all agree that the self-life, another one is self-life also very important because every uh, everyone agree that the self-life of millets is uh, uh, less compared to other cereals. So how to improve the self-life of uh, uh, these uh, uh, millets? So that is also we are working on a research mode. So that will be given uh, as a, maybe another uh, uh, six months we will get some results. And uh, the last one is uh, uh, we, we are also encouraging the uh, this uh, another other programs because general awareness because of uh, uh, not only that we are also creating some uh, this dissemination program through TV and media. So that is also one channel we want to start from NIN. So we want to give uh, dissemination programs. Uh, so in print media and soft, uh, soft media. So that is also one channel we are uh, going to start as a healthy food and uh, as, a, as a now Eat Right program. So we are also partner in the Eat Right program, the net program. And every, uh, every month uh, we are celebrating some conducting different programs to disseminate the healthy food so that, that that's the these are the my uh, important points i'm just uh, concluding that so it is a uh, nutri cereal is uh, everybody should encourage a nutri should a nutri cereal should be uh, making into a part of your diet thank you dr lakshmiya i think hyderabad is a very exciting place to be with nin imr ikrisat manage and all the important institutions uh, converging in uh, Telangana and Hyderabad. So uh, we take your uh, uh, inputs uh, with a lot of uh, interest and I hope nutri serials will make a comeback and uh, your impact studies and awareness creations will create a lot of impact. Now going over to manage director. So again, I would uh, lead a question to you. I was collector Vikarabad where uh, you know, the place is very dry. It doesn't have major rivers flowing through it. So we had a farmer suicide prevention helpline and we received a call and our team rushed to the spot. We found a farmer who was cultivating rice by pumping out groundwater, inundating his field and cultivating rice. So we asked him, what's wrong with you? Why are you inundating the field with groundwater and then cultivating rice? He said, Madam, you can give lectures about millets, but who will buy my crop? 
uh, for the rice, the government, both center and state, is supporting it with MSP and not only just supporting with MSP announcement, but they have procurement centers in every village where uh, rice is being procured. But if I grow millet, will you assure me of a price? Will you assure me of a market? So I rather pump out groundwater and uh, you know grow rice rather than produce millet. So that's when we got into thinking. So it's very easy to give gyan and a lot of us do that on stages and off and off the stage, on the stage. But there are serious problems on the ground when it comes to cultivation of millets. The farmers uh, need a lot of support in their extension activity. Uh, we need to really improve the MSP operations. We really need to ensure that we have low cost decentralized solution for processing them and innovative ideas for upscaling and mainstreaming them in large government programs. So with your expertise on agriculture extension activities, can you throw some light of how we can help farmers and encourage them to grow millets more and more? Yeah, thank you, madam. Uh, respected uh, chairman of chairperson of this session and uh, my fellow panelists. Uh, madam, you have raised a very pertinent question, in fact. Uh, See, a couple of observations uh, on the lines of what you have observed in Vikarabad, I am uh, quoting for the benefit of the audience. Uh, in Madhya Pradesh, uh, you know, it is a deep black soil. So, when I was on a field visit, uh, farmers, they were drawing the groundwater and, uh, uh, you know, they were uh, going for a rice cultivation. Then the same question I asked, why you are uh, drawing the groundwater and moreover, it is a black soil. Uh, once you go for a flood irrigation, uh, salinity, alkalinity will creep and your soil will uh, go waste. He said, Saab, hum log to 10 saal cultivate karenge, baad mein dekhenge. That was the answer given by uh, uh, the farmer there. And uh, you know, it's, it's a tough job uh, for extension worker to convince the farmers what is right and what is wrong. So, but as an economist, as a marketing expert, expert you know, this value chain uh, uh, it revolves around monetary gain for the farmers, madam. So that's why we have seen a monocropping in Punjab and Haryana. Rice, wheat, rice, wheat combination for the past uh, almost 50 years after the Green Revolution. So this is uh, depleting the natural resources to a greater extent. According to one uh, science magazine, if uh, Haryana continues to cultivate rice and wheat combination, probably in 25 years there will be another Rajasthan. So desert, they will be deserted. So that's how the resources are depleting. But we need to have an appropriate policy for uh, conserving the natural resource as well as, uh, you know, now we are talking about climate resilient crops. So all these things, they revolve around uh, what monetary benefit we are giving to the farmers. Now there are two components in this uh, value chain. One is value chain itself and the other one is supply chain. So in Indian agriculture, we say that uh, Supply chain is fragmented because somebody is producing, somebody is marketing and uh, it is reaching consumer. So there is no ordinary supply chain. So that is resulting into a high transaction cost. Second aspect of uh, this uh, uh, issue is value chain. So value chain is the activities uh, which are carried out from production point till it reaches consumer. So what is the value added in each stage? It speaks of that. So, I, I am overwhelmed by the experiment uh, conducted by district collector of Asivabad. Uh, you know, with your permission, I think we can document that success story and uh, try to replicate and uh, put a appropriate value chain into the place. Now, uh, as I told, uh, unless the issue of marketing is addressed, I think uh, we cannot uh, convince the farmers to go for a particular crop based on the demand or supply of a product. So, uh, market linkage can happen. Uh, uh, in two ways. One is, uh, you know, government itself is a biggest buyer. So you, 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 are, you are buying the produce for your public distribution system, you are buying a produce for uh, government hostels and then institutions. So, government should take a lead in uh, buying the produce because in the present system of marketing, you know, nothing can be done. So, as long as intermediaries are there, they keep on exploiting the farmers and uh, you know farmer will get a lesser portion of consumer rupee i am talking of lesser portion of consumer rupee because many studies they have revealed that in case of vegetables farmer receive as low as one third of the what consumer pays 
in case of food grains uh, the situation is little better but still he is getting around 45 to 50 percent but remaining 50 percent where is it going it is going to the intermediaries so that's why uh, we at manage we conduct capacity building program on uh, mainly how to aggregate these farmers so aggregation can be in terms of self help group uh, which uh, uh, asifa asifa collector madam has done or aggregation can be into new generation uh, farmer producer companies now the aggregation increase in the scale the the transaction cost comes down so that way the farmers income can be increased and aggregation also gives bargaining power now a farmer with 10 quintal of jowar if he goes to market whatever price trader goes uh, he has to accept it if he takes 10 trucks of a jowar or whatever commodity then trader uh, trader can be dictated by the farmers uh, for quoting the price so that way bargaining power increases so that is another advantage of uh, aggregation and then uh, of course uh, uh, linking it to midday meal and all i have already uh, told madam uh, this uh, price issue is demonstrated in the case of maize so with the growth in poultry industry i think area expansion especially in the state of bihar and karnataka uh, it, it has been substantial mainly because there is a demand for poultry feed and uh, in turn farmers they are going uh, somebody mentioned that uh, you know uh, if you start consuming then uh, farmers will uh, grow local consumption uh, issue raised by some of the uh, panelists here so uh, that is one aspect the price incentive is very crucial for uh, uh, you know dictating the uh, crop pattern then uh, on international front i think uh, uh, we have a greater scope for increasing the export of millets uh, at the beginning we can uh, target the indian diaspora residing across the globe so we can popularize uh, ethnic foods uh, prepared here in india among the indian diasp diaspora and uh, slowly you know the other population living there uh, can uh, get used to that uh, food so that one idea can be you know mooted as a policy measure at uh, government of india level madam so that is uh, the other aspect of uh, uh, this uh, you know international market and of course uh, uh, this uh, secondary agriculture is another issue so to increase the income of the farmer uh, the uh, the janaka of secondary agriculture uh, dalwaisar is sitting here so another way of increasing the income of the farmer is secondary agriculture so uh, millets uh, bio waste uh, from uh, bio waste of millet we can we can go for biofuel production or we can go for a palatable fodder uh, then uh, we can go for many other uh, products how you utilizing this uh, bio waste from the millets so this way i think uh, value chain uh, you know put in place uh, customizing it to the requirement of the different regions can help in increasing the income of the farmers so we need to put appropriate value chain in place and then uh, increase the income of the farmers so these are some of the view points uh, from my side i thank uh, organizers for giving me an opportunity to share my views i also thank uh, chairperson uh, who is uh, very uh, logically analyzing the different uh, uh, deliberations thank you madam thank you thank you director sir uh, it was really enlightening. I take this key point from you that aggregation is the way to go. So, uh, by ensuring that the farmers uh, uh, form into big uh, aggregate like FPO or uh, even bigger, then they can have the bargaining power. You've given some very interesting ideas of biofuel, fodder, export and linking with the government schemes. I think that's a good thought to uh, you know carry on with. Now, I think uh, we would go to uh, Mr. Sinha, Mr. Pranay Sinha, who is going to give the keynote address to uh, all of us on uh, this particular topic, how to improve the millet value chain, the replication, upscaling and mainstreaming of millets. Over to you, Mr. Sinha. So, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I would like to uh, put on record that the Thought processes which I am going to share, I am also beneficiary of lot many policy dialogues at the senior level, and uh, uh, our honourable uh, chair, Evelyn Farmer Singham, Dr. Ashok Dalvey, uh, our colleagues from Niti Ayo and uh, various state governments. So it's a collective thought process rather than being attributed to me or WFP. It's a collective effort. So with this, uh, next please. So I've been asked by the Indian Institute of Millet Research 
to introspect on the uh, millet mainstreaming along with the millet value chain. And in this context, all of us are aware and since morning, we have been, we have been beneficiary of various thought processes at the national level, however, external, uh, external policy pursuit of mainstreaming inter millets internationally and the next year we are uh, running up to the celebration for that. So uh, before doing that, uh, let us put forth uh, a framework which brings our attention to various trends which we have been discussing since morning. And the core of this is the agriculture value chain and precisely millets value chain. So there are six of those various stages, production, storage and transportation, processing, packaging and branding, distribution and consumption. So entire food system approach of various dimensions. And then the outer dimension is since government of India and various state governments are trying to make an extra effort to put it into the mainstream. And so that's why various aspects of mainstreaming is also being thought through and we have five of those. One is institutional commitment and coordination, sustainable and innovative financing, multi-stakeholder partnership, enabling environment for enhanced production and inclusion and safety nets, and finally, not to forgive or forget uh, gender and inclusion dimensions. So, next please. The tables is in the detail that what do we mean by all this? And when we start unbundling, then we figure out that what we have discussed since morning. Uh, so, I will ask everybody to take a pause and start thinking from wherever they are coming from, from whatever public policy perspective or a department or the NGO, just to just see one of that as a space from where they are coming from. And then also think that five years before or five years down the line, are they were the same or are they going to be the same? So time and space is a very important concept which I'll bring to the attention next. But at the same time, before doing that, uh, the previous slide, please. So on the millet value chain, you see there are six dimensions which we just mentioned. And then there are four of these dimensions, four of these indicators against each. And every dimension, for example, production is an interplay of four various sub-dimensions. For example, if the farmer doesn't adopt the improved agronomic practices for enhanced productivity, the entire calculation of the policy dilemma uh, at the Ministry of Agriculture and, um, and Department of Agriculture at the state level to allocate the millets for supply to the Department of Women and Child Development Department. So despite having those demands in place and despite having those policy intent by the, at the highest level, the production side is just deficient just because of our not attention to one dimension. So everything is important, every dimension is important. And I'll just mark it very briefly the farm inputs and farm mechanization, the irrigational infrastructure, and the contribution of agricultural research and extension. And all these various dimensions, we have heard a lot of good practices since morning being undertaken by various stakeholders. And uh, there are still challenges, and we have a long way to go acknowledging the same. So on the storage and transportation side, the storage and infrastructure just like we do extend it for the rice and wheat. Do we have the same infrastructure at the district level? Do we have enough post-harvest handling technology? Have we thought through the self-life? And are we providing the handling and transportation cost equivalent to what we are doing to the preferred commodities, in this case with the millets, the rice and wheat? The processing, whether the technology has matured in terms of grading, harvesting, diffusion, and are we giving enough attention to minor millets. The packaging and branding, the nutritional labeling, dedicated support to FPOs, organic certification, branding, all these are very important dimensions. And uh, at the district level or at the state level, various millet missions and uh, initiatives of our own district administration and collectors are doing so, so that they could put more money back to the smallholders' pocket. Distribution and consumption. As we see that there has been enough of uh, FPOs and SHGs are in place. NRLM from uh, Ministry of Rural Development, we have huge, huge infrastructure of 
support staff reaching out to our SHG women in every village across India. It is almost to the tune of 10 crores uh, uh, SHG women. So almost uh, each household, each SHG, this is what is the motto of Ministry of Rural Development. So are we, are we, are, are we harnessing enough the potential of those SHGs in terms of aggregating and using them for different means in terms of distribution. We have heard in the morning the use of lamps in the Odisha Millet Mission. We have used, we have heard the use of existing uh, institution cooperative which were mandated to procure the minor forest produce in Chhattisgarh now being harnessed to procure the minor millet. So instead of creating new institutions, how do we harness our own 70 years of efforts so that those institutions still fit for the purpose for our millet mainstreaming perspective. And finally, last but not the least, on the consumption side, yes, there are strategy to increase the consumption for millets. Public distribution system, ICDS, and using it in the social safety nets is one of those initiatives where a formative, so where, where the formative, uh, formative uh, supply would trigger that demand. But then there is, it, is, it has to go beyond that because of government uh, entitlement. It has to be used at the, at the household level by their own means. And next piece. I would not go in the mainstreaming dimensions. All of us have uh, heard a lot since morning. But uh, I would like to, next piece. I would like to once again take a minute of yours in terms of deciding that, okay, there are good practices across India. There are good practices which we have heard. But then, are we going to adapt each and every good practices in its own? Uh, uh, how do we do? How do we take that decision to what to include, what not to include, or whether to contextualize this? And that's where we bring this uh, IFAD uh, framework: the level of maturity of value chain development, and it's a collective knowledge of assessment of their 30 or 40 years of engagement in supporting different developing countries in value chain programs. And they identified and we believe that the millet value chain are either at the entry stage or the intermediate stage or the nuanced stage, depending upon the interplay of various dimensions we just mentioned. And uh, based on, so every block or every panchayat or every district could, have, could be having different endowments. And some of the districts could be advanced, some of the states could be advanced. They are probably advanced or intermediate, but some of the states are still at the entry, entry level of probably some of the districts or some of the geographies. So it needs to be identified at what level, whether we need to inject a completely two crores investment in establishing a millet uh, industry or uh, plant without having enough procurement or without you know, having enough production base in those districts. So probably those investments would not be needed first time. So first we need to see the production side and then aggregation. And finally, the next slide please. Now bringing back to what government of India is willing. So there are two, two, two prone approach. One what we are doing domestically and what we are aspiring to do globally. And if we have to replicate, scale up, mainstreaming millets in India and globally, there could be four components. So these are policy proposals and we have been working through various uh, institutions of government of India and various state governments. So we could have demonstration on capture of good practices and then those could be used to facilitate policy and institutional in initiatives and mainstreaming. Once again, those could be used for the capacity building within India and beyond and further there could be strengthening of the monitoring and evaluation framework where the mainstreaming indicators could be assessed and tracked. So in each of these dimensions, we, have, we are working with uh, uh, Niti Aayog Agriculture Vertical and various state governments like Odisha Millet Mission. And uh, uh, I would not like to go to the next two slides. Those were uh, uh, different pathways, but all of us, we would reach to those stage and these are scalability assessment. Each and every dimension could be used by every stakeholder. What one would like to adapt, how would you like to adapt, you have, whether you have enough capacity to do so, both financial and uh, 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 human resources, and then that would be thought through. So with this, uh, thanks once again, Chair, for your presence and uh, allowing me to uh,
complete this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Sinha. I think you've taken great pains to carefully uh, document production, storage, transportation, processing, distribution, and consumption. I think all policymakers, implementers, private and NGO partners need to think about each and every one of the step and how we strengthen all of these processes uh, before uh, we go into the year of millets. Uh, finally, I would like to ask my co-chair, uh, Professor Kanna, the Professor Pro Vice Chancellor of the University, which is promoting sports, as to how he will be able to uh, incorporate millets and upstream and main scale it. Thank you, Madam. The, the most important factor is one of the thing which we can see in the market is the sports supplements are coming in a big way. It's a big, huge market is there which people are actually synthesizing certain products which are basically sometimes harmful, they are over being, being overdosed. But slowly people are, have started realizing that we should have natural type of food supplements or we should have a complete plate also. So what I could see the benefit in this is that millet has kind of a complete food which is required by these athletes from the younger stages only. And we thought of that if we can prove this part and we can replace those food supplement and put this millet in certain forms in the supplements or to create certain more supplements, like I'll say that we need to improve the glycogen level of the muscle in the muscle and liver. So how to do it? We start doing it by somehow just giving certain kind of carbohydrate with that food creates more problem. And if millet is there, possibly we can give them the enrich them with the, this particular millet carbohydrate. Similarly, when we see this the the, the iron part, the, if we can make it bioavailability of iron little bit enhanced by certain processes as uh, food technologists have suggested us and we can really enrich this iron part supplement iron through this and make some iron supplements for the infant because most of this our indian population is suffering from iron deficiency anemia because they are being put under more stress more load more overtraining and the expectation of high performance high fitness is really the need of the hour also if we have to compete at Olympic level and that is what we aspire to be and if we can think about this immunity part if we can think about the recovery regeneration part we need this kind of supplement of proteinaceous calcium iron everything we need to have and this one millet can be one of the answer of that and we need to uh, prepare some supplement and give it to that or replace those supplement which are artificially available so we are starting we have started this project now in, in uh, with IIMR and in to also to see the cognitive functions also that the mental performance is also very very important maybe we will have some kind of fortification in the food and see that how we can just subsidize with that minerals also and which are most important for um, improving the mental ability of this so we'll try to do that from the sports point of view thank you professor that's a very interesting thought now I see a lot of my uh, young uh, uh, friends and uh, siblings, they just pop a protein bar before going to their classes or to their work. So this uh, issue of uh, uh, sports uh, food, uh, whey proteins and different supplements is becoming very, very uh, prominent. A lot of people going to gym are uh, being prescribed a whole lot of things without going into what are the ingredients. So introducing millets, in these protein products as well as uh, in the sports uh, food uh, nutrition i think is a very important topic that you have uh, touched upon so thank you for that now to sum up i think we've had a very interesting panel uh, ranging from agriculture extension officers to uh, ias officers to dietitians to nutritionists so i think uh, you had a variety of uh, suggestions today and i hope uh, this would have uh, definitely enriched you. To sum up, Alok Srivastavji was uh, talking about how we improve the vacuum sealing and steaming to improve shelf life. He was telling this, uh, the regulatory approach needs to be strengthened and also clinical trials and processing. He was suggesting malting and germination to uh, 
in improve the mainstreaming of millets and uh, chahat has uh, very passionately talked about asifabad project she has talked about cultivation cooking and conservation and uh, exchanging seed for seed which is a very interesting uh, uh, topic uh, and uh, dr jagmeet madan has uh, all reminded all of us about eat right campaign so if we have to really mainstream millets first we have to change the palate of youngsters and we also need to start from our campuses from our offices from each family that we should take the oath of eat eat right and uh, we also went over to uh, professor lakshmaya who has uh, passionately talked about uh, nin and its role in ensuring that we bring in uh, millets into different government programs and their different clinical trials which they are doing for ensuring that the impact of millets is the maximum in our uh, nutritional security and finally uh, director uh, manage has also talked about various ideas how we can uh, improve the millet production and how we encourage the extension activities like he interestingly talked about secondary agriculture practices how it can be used for fodder biofuel and where there is a demand the market will find a way so he was talking about the chicken feed and maize so similarly if we can link the market with uh, the agriculture and naturally we can go a long way and mr sinha has carefully documented different stages of the mainstreaming so i think uh, uh, all of us had different views to talk about and i hope you enjoyed our anecdotes and our uh, implementation strategies and all the important policy makers and implementers are there in this uh, forum i'm sure at the end of the day and i hope i am our nutri hub will come up with very good policy and implementation suggestions so that we can make the year of millets a truly a successful one and an impactful one for our country's nutritional security thank you all for your patience so now if we have any one or two questions then we can take them yes ma'am can we have the mic please we'll just take two questions and close because i think there's a next session as well good evening chairperson ma'am and a wonderful presentation of the panelists and the chairperson has conducted let's give a big hand to the discussion and the pointers raised i am professor kausalya professor of food science and nutrition and i am registrar of avanashringam home science university in coimbatore tamil nadu Very i nice. just want to say one or two pointers that way back 30 years back dr rajamal p devdas an international home scientist and nutritionist also the then president of nutrition society of india conducted a long term study in a village where the same concept of cultivation cooking so madam conducted a study on ragi and rice based diet of course not on phytochemicals and others but on based on protein quality and others and studied the pregnancy outcome in a village and followed up with the children up to 15 16 years of age where i joined as a research associate it was a pl480 project through icar at that time and we are working we have 40 villages adopted in our nss and every weekend we now demonstrate uh, nutritious recipes including millet based and i am also the national So joint secretary of nutrition society of india and nsi gives sponsorship to conduct various programs on millets so we have a long way and i am very happy that we have tied up an mou with iimr some of our scholars are working on and tamil nadu government icd is also we have the nutritious mix which is called satu maavu which is given to pregnant lactating and also infants other as a complementary food which contains malted finger millet also so we are all working towards this goal i have only two questions the agriculture scientists should say that which variety we should use for which type of products and number two we always talk as nutritionists the phytochemicals on one side as phytates tannins and all that on other side as anti nutrients so where do we go for that and we are also sanctioned with a project on dst on anemia 
we have taken up the study we are going to do with the DST on comparison of bioavailability as well as we are going to prepare in the form of a nutri bar or laddu and we are going to see the in vitro as well as using cacao to cell model and in, in vivo availability on anemic adolescent girls. So let's join hands and thank you for the great opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kausalya. I think Dr. Lakshmiya, can you take the second question because the previous panel had agriculture scientists. Uh, here we don't, uh, she's sitting right next to you. I think you both can discuss the answers. So now I'll uh, leave it to the nutritionist to ask the, uh, say, answer the second part of the question. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kausalya. Uh, you have asked a very pertinent question and uh, you are you already aware of that uh, we are uh, doing different uh, trials with uh, anti-nutrients and how to different processes. So, we are uh, going to complete maybe another uh, couple of months. So, we will get the results. That, so, that is one. And uh, uh, before uh, I am giving to uh, uh, phone to some other person, I want to give one, three uh, take home messages. One is we already told, so we are uh, advocating eat locally and talk globally. So that local means all these uh, millets and other things. And second one is uh, you need not eat less. You can eat as much as you want with the right food. So that is second one. So third one is... Uh, uh, I think to add on to his answer, uh, we as traditionally we have several food practices to nullify uh, the anti-nutrients and the other adverse effects and which food combinations we should have in order to make the maximum absorption. So I think it's also a good thing to uh, go back in a traditional way, like how we would ferment your uh, ragi kool, which you have in Tamil Nadu. So which really, uh, you know, uh, counters the effect of uh, different types of anti-nutrients. So I think there are several traditional practices which have helped that can also be looked into then of course you have IMR and uh, NIN working on how to ensure the anti-nutrients and the other uh, chemicals do not counteract. So we'll go for the last question for the day. The gentleman from behind, please, sir. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, third, third, third one. What I told you, third one is uh, you eat for your DNA. But even Dr. Uh, Raja sir, he may be knowing that you eat for your DNA. So that uh, Asian India, Asian uh, Indians are bad genes. Because your bad, your uh, uh, your uh, bad lifestyle is the trigger. So that's what the answer is. Uh, you eat millet. That is a healthy food. So then uh, you you can also uh, you can also have a uh, uh, good lifestyle. That was a very racist comment to make. But I think all of us are South Asians here, so we will take it with a pinch of salt. So yes, please go ahead. Madam, I am Nitin Patil from Maharashtra. Se. Batai. ये एनएनसी का प्रोग्राम तो अच्छा चल रहा है इसमें नो डाउट डायस पे सभी लोग हैं सभी है मैडम ने भी सुबह सबको अच्छा दिया लेकिन ये इसमें फार्मर कहां है या हॉल में कितने फार्मर्स है आप जिनके बजे पे जिनके बलबूते पर ये प्रोग्राम बनाने सोच रहे उनका इसमें कोई हिस्सा नहीं 1 या 2% आप जब तक उनके पास नहीं जाते चाहत मैडम ने एक प्रोग्राम बताया उन्होंने ग्राउंड लेवल तक काम किया अच्छा किया है उनके वजह से उनको यश भी मिला अच्छा है लेकिन इतने यहां है इनकी भाषा किसके समझ में आई जिसके समझ में आना चाहिए उसके समझ में कोई नहीं जाता जैसे आपने बताया कि फार्मर के पास गई लेकिन वो बोला कि मैं कहां बेचू यह हाल हमारा है हम एफ बनाया पहले बनाया तो उन्होंने बोला जो दस से पहले हो गई उनको बेनिफिट मिलेगा बाद में मोदी साहब ने बनाया वो दस हजार जो बीच में बनाया उनको कुछ भी नहीं अभी बोलते कि नया बनाओ फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर कंपनियां जो फार्मर्स की है वो कहां पे पैसा खर्च करेगी जिसके पास पैसा है वो कुछ भी करके नया बनाएगा पहले बेच डालेगा दूसरा बनाएगा लेकिन जो फार्मर है जो खुद बनाना कुछ सोचना चाहता है बनना चाहता है उस पे कुछ ध्यान देना चाहिए इसमें बहुत अच्छा सजेशन है जी सो थैंक यू मैडम 
आई थिंक कैन यू प्लीज रिपीट योर नेम आपका नाम बताइएगा नितिन पाटिल महाराष्ट्र सो पाटिल जी ने बहुत अच्छा बताया कि हमारा फोकस फार्मर्स पे होना चाहिए बिकॉज अगर प्रोडक्शन नहीं है तो हम जीरो है विदाउट प्रोडक्शन ऑब्वियसली वी कान टेक द नेक्स्ट स्टेप सो वी शुड डेफिनेटली फोकस ऑन गिविंग दैम द गुड इनपुट्स दैट इज द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ सीड्स विच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देन इंश्योरिंग द एम एस पी ऑपरेशंस एंड इन द लास्ट पैनल ऑल्सो वेरी पैशनेट फार्मर फ्राम पंजाब हैड टॉक्ट अबाउट इंश्योरिंग दैट शॉर्ट वेराइटी ऑफ Uh, the cultivation of the crops the varieties the hybrid varieties the natural varieties should all be encouraged and the extension activities and the machinery should be made available the fpos should be strengthened and uh, uh, guided in the proper way i think uh, he has main he has definitely hit the core we should all think about the farmers first and then only the millet uh, program will be a good success so uh, i think with that uh, positive criticism and with ensuring and pledging that we will take all this knowledge back to the field and also learn from them and solve the problems uh, we'll ensure that the millets reach to every household and the problems which every each and every stakeholder has pointed out will find solution through IMR and their uh, wonderful conference that they are conducting i finally would like to thank IMR for this uh, opportunity and uh, ensure that we work together Uh, all of us work together to ensure that the nutritional security of our nation is safeguarded thank you very much thank you for your patience thank you very much uh, madam uh, chairperson co-chairperson and all the panelists of this session uh, thank you ma'am that you have already summarized the whole thing so it's nothing to tell more so we just fel felicitate chairperson and the co-chairperson the chairperson of this session is Ms. Mrs. Divya Devarajan, IAS Special Secretary, Women Development and Child Welfare. The co-chairperson is Professor Gulshan Kanna, Pro Vice Chancellor, Manav Rachna University. And the keynote address is given by Pranay Sinha from WFP. We had panelists, Madam Chayat Bajpai. As, as, uh, additional collector of asifabad dr alok shrivastava president af sti dr jagmeet madan president ida dr a lakshmaya secretary nsi dr k c gumgalbat director manage thank you very much madam and all all the panelists and co chairman and chairman thank you